election-related tax. Um, do you think the administration should have come out before the election more boldly about, with hard intelligence, about these attacks? Well, let me, look, uh, I am not going to start making comments at this point. I haven't commented on this uh, publicly because of the job I do. But let me say today that I'm not going to comment on anonymous reports from intelligence uh, uh, officials that are not identified that have quotes around the concept of intelligence officials. I, I just am not going to comment on that. But let me comment very specifically on your sort of question about earlier. Folks, uh, we sat in the Situation Room, I remember, in the White House with the President of the United States, and the President made the decision based on the input that was carefully, carefully vetted by the intelligence community and presented to everybody uh, that he did have an obligation to go out to the country and give a warning. Uh, and he did so. Back in, back in October, the President authorized the Director of National Intelligence to and, – and, and the Department of Homeland Security together to make a very clear statement to this nation, to our nation. And they said unequivocally that they assessed with high confidence – that's what we said in October – with high confidence <coughs> that the Russian government directed compromises of emails from U.S. institutions, including political organizations, and that these thefts and disclosures were intended to interfere with our election process. So the President understood and made clear it's a serious matter. It was a serious matter then. It's a serious matter now as even more information comes out. I'm not going to comment on it further except to say that people need to remember that the President issued a warning, but he had to be obviously sensitive to not being viewed as interfering on behalf of a candidate or against a candidate or in a way that promoted um, <coughs> unrealistic assessments about what was happening. I think the President did that. And now we have to get at the facts, and I'm confident we will in the months ahead. Thank you all very much. Guyana, throughout the presidential race, Donald Trump, he was talking at great length about the, how the U.S. and Russia should join forces, perhaps to fight international terrorism. So now he's spoken with President Putin. Do you think Trump will come good on his pledge? Well, I certainly don't know. I would love to be a fly on the wall during that phone conversation. What we have is a readout of the phone call from the Russian president's press office. And the readout says Vladimir Putin once again congratulated Donald Trump with his victory in the presidential election, expressed Russia's willingness to be a partner to the United States based on mutual respect and, uh, quote unquote, non-interference in each other's internal affairs. Both agreed that these are difficult times for U.S.-Russia relations and both expressed willingness to work together to normalize the relations. According to the readout of the phone conversation, Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin also agreed on the importance of joining forces to fight terrorism, which could lead to the U.S. and Russia forming a united front in Syria. Throughout the presidential race, the Washington establishment and much of the media blasted Donald Trump for saying that he would he, he would get along with the Russian president. Uh, his friendly position on Russia, very much in contrast to Hillary Clinton's, has raised, uh, among other things, uh, questions about the role of NATO moving forward. At a news conference this Monday, President Obama said in his final days in office he would travel to NATO allies to assure them that they have nothing to worry about. Here. In my conversation with the president-elect, uh, he uh, expressed a, a great interest in uh, maintaining our core strategic relationships. Uh, and so one of the messages I will be able to deliver is his commitment to NATO and the Transatlantic Alliance. Uh, I think that's one of the most important functions I can serve at this stage during this trip uh, is to let them know that uh, there is no weakening of resolve when it comes to America's commitment to maintaining a strong and robust uh, NATO relationship. Almost 
Nobody expected Donald Trump to win the election, and everybody was bracing for a continuation or even worsening of very frosty relations between the U.S. and Russia under Hillary Clinton. With Donald Trump in office, it seems there is hope, specifically when it comes to U.S.-Russia relations, although it is too early to tell. Donald Trump hasn't been sworn into office yet. We have yet to see whether, you know, the sanctions the U.S. imposed on Russia related to Ukraine will stay in place. Mr. Trump hasn't really weighed in on that yet. These past few years have done a lot of damage to U.S.-Russia relations, with both governments blaming each other for that.